Have you ever wondered what causes high blood pressure? Cleo hasn't, but I have, and I'm sure you have. So stay tuned so I can teach you our philosophy on what causes high blood pressure and one thing you can do to begin the journey to healing yourself. What up, everyone? This is Josh Rubin from East Field Sailing Performance, and today we're going to talk about, as brief as possible, as I always say, why we get high blood pressure. Not me, maybe you, someone you know, but why are we getting it? Of course, we know that blood pressure medications don't work. Public service announcement, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not recommending you take high blood pressure medication. I'm not recommending you play with your blood pressure medication. And I'm not recommending that you stop taking your blood pressure medication. Bottom line is, I'm not talking about your medication. You and your doctor can talk about your medication. The bottom line is this. Most people that are in a hypothyroid state initially have low blood pressure. And we see this acute to chronic. Initially, they have low blood pressure, low blood pressure as a compensation because of an adrenal insufficiency. Now, I've talked about adrenal insufficiency before and our thoughts on what this really is. And it's really acute to chronic blood sugar dysregulation. So you can say hypothyroid people initially usually have low blood pressure because of blood sugar handling issues, hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, etc., which creates a blood volume issue because they basically they have a low circulating blood volume, I should say, because they're losing sodium. This is a hallmark sign of hypothyroid people. They compensate with adrenaline and they lose sodium at a fast rate, which doesn't regulate blood volume anymore, and they hold water in the body. And this is a common hallmark sign of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroid, hypothyroidism people are losing sodium. Sodium regulates blood volume as well as albumin. And you see this in hypothyroid people. This is why they get swelling, especially in the neck. And this is evident in women that are pregnant because they need the salt to actually increase their blood volume by 40% to actually help with the production or reproduction or growth of the developing fetus. So blood volume is important. I'm just giving you an example. But blood volume is important. When it drops, we have low circulating blood volume, which can actually affect our blood pressure. So once again, hypothyroid people initially have low blood pressure because of blood sugar handling issues, so we could say adrenal insufficiency, um, which creates a low circulating blood volume because through the blood vessels because of loss of sodium at a rapid rate, which holds water in the body. So now blood can't get circulated, recirculated through the body to, li to do um, stuttering today, to deliver nutrients to the systems. Now, what is going on? There's always compensation. The body is always compensating. We have to ask yourself, are these compensations bad? Or are these compensations actually good to keep us alive? And is our body saying, hey, you have high blood pressure because A, B, C, and D, this is going on. And all you have to do is understand the mechanism and the function of the body and do the opposite to get the blood pressure back down so the body doesn't have to compensate. So in my eyes, it's a sign. I'm not saying high blood pressure is good, but it's actually a sign that something's going on and your body's talking to you and your body's actually compensating to keep you alive. So initially, when your blood pressure is low, the kidneys can't filter water properly. And as I mentioned, you're losing sodium. And the bottom line is, just to make a long story nice and short, you actually start producing excess angiotensin, which actually raise your, raises your blood pressure. When we're hypothyroid, a lot of the times, or most of the times, and we're compensating with adrenaline, blood is actually shunted from the extremities to the core. This is actually to keep us alive. This is to keep the most vital organs, the most important systems in the body alive which actually raises your blood pressure because you're pushing blood through the small network of vessels because of the excess adrenaline production, causing this even smaller network of blood vessels or vessels. As I mentioned many times already, these hypothyroid people are compensating with adrenaline, and initially you'll see a low pulse over time when they can't compensate anymore. You actually see a super high pulse when they wake up or throughout the day above 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, etc. You get the point. Um, and this is being released from the adrenal glands, which actually constricts the blood vessels all over the body to combat and compensate for the low blood pressure. All of this, this is all a compensation. All of this is due to the body trying to raise blood sugar to meet the demands that you're placing on your body and meet the demands that you're not actually meeting by putting the right amount of food, the right food frequency, right ratios, and the right quality of digestible metabolic foods in your body to regulate your blood sugar so you're storing different vitamins, minerals, and nutrients to assist in thyroid hormone conversion in the liver where you store glycogen and you're using food and food, food once again, food frequency to store blood sugar, 
So you can use things like thyroid hormone, oxygen, glucose efficiently at the cell level to produce energy. Pretty simple, right? With all this constriction going on of the blood vessels, your blood pressure is going to rise over time. So you see initially it's low, that's a compensation, and then over time because of you're not regulating blood sugar, and as you know in other videos you release adrenaline and cortisol to compensate for this, this is why initially that adrenal insufficiency is a, a blood sugar handling problem because you're releasing glucocorticoids, which is cortisol, to regulate inflammation, regulate your blood pressure, and regulate your blood sugar. And you're losing sodium. So initially your blood pressure is actually low, but over time when you're releasing you know, you're shunting blood, you're pushing uh, blood through the blood vessels, you're releasing more adrenaline from the adre uh, adrenal glands, you're getting more constriction to compensate for this low blood pressure. Over time, you actually create more constriction of the blood vessels, which raises your blood pressure over time. So what's one thing you can do? It's pretty simple. Regulate your blood sugar. Of course, it's a lot deeper when we talk about food, but try to eat the right foods. For, that are right for humans, like fruits, roots, and good quality proteins. Regulate your blood sugar by working on your food frequency. Is it every two hours? Is it every three hours? Well, when we work with people, and people go through our program, we teach them this and we find what works for you. But just start eating more than what you're eating now to help regulate your blood sugar, to help regulate the stress on the adrenal glands, the thyroid, the liver, the body systems, so you can actually start unwinding that process over time and affecting your blood pressure. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm out of here.